Good evening from Eagle Pass Public Library. Thank you for joining us this beautiful evening. Um, we have a special guest here today from the Red Floors. We have Poncho Nevarez and Joe Cruz, who will be sharing some of their music uh, from his new album. And hopefully he can tell us a little bit about it in a while, where you can find his album, where you can buy it, because it's going to be available pretty soon, right, Poncho? Uh, very soon. Yeah, he's releasing it in vinyl, I believe. On vinyl, yes. Yes, and right now you can access his music through some of the social media and apps I, I downloaded from Apple Music. Uh, iTunes, Spotify, um, everywhere. Yes. It's, you got to listen. If you haven't, you, I'm glad you're going to be able to share and hear some of his other music that hasn't been released tonight, I'm sure. So um, in here today, we have our mayor who's going to say a couple of words. But thank you again for joining us tonight. Yay. And we got our mayor here, everybody. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Ms. Olivas. Really, uh, it's an honor to have you here, Poncho, the Red Floors, and, of course, one of your sidekicks, Joe, always there. You know, if, if Poncho's there, it seems like Joe is there, so it's good to have both of you here. El fiel. El fiel. <laughs> But more importantly, you know, we're, we're here in our beautiful down Eagle Pass library and, and under the direction of Chris Olivas, uh, she's really taken it to another level. So thank you, Chris, for everything you're doing to promote the library. We want to showcase it. We want to have activities. And, and as if you'll follow the library page, you'll see all the activities that they're having throughout the day, little crafts and cooking and, and recipes. And today, this evening, again, you know, this is not the first time she puts on a show for the City of Eagle Pass at the library. And we want to thank Poncho Nevarez, our former state rep, a good friend of ours, really committed to the community. And now he's showcasing his talent with his sidekick, Joe Cruz. So the Red Floors, thank enjoy you, the music, enjoy the show. And most importantly, you know, come out to the and activities that are going on in the community. And that way, you know, you can really see what we got going because we're doing so much more nowadays. Thank so you, thank Mayor. you, Poncho. Thank you, Mayor. Everybody, Enjoy the show. Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. I, um, you know, I was always told you had to be quiet in the library, and I'm not going to be very quiet. Tonight. But uh, for those of you who have not been to this public library, it used to be the old post office, and uh, it's not the old post office anymore, but it's an awesome, you know, I was walking back from uh, the other side of the library to this side, and I couldn't help but um, be inspired by how beautiful it is. And one, because it's full of books, and two, because it's just awesome. I mean, the way it's finished, and uh, you know, the the uh, you should be very proud of the, the the work that was done, Mayor, when you were on the council, and and now, and uh, you know, my I'm I'm a, I'm doubly blessed and grateful to be here because my friend of like 34, 35 years, Chris Olivas, who's the librarian, and I'm very proud of her. She, um, she asked me to come and, and do this, and I was very excited. I just couldn't find the day to do it, and now the day's come, and I'm excited about that. I'm excited because, for a lot of different reasons, but I'm excited because I get to play some of these songs the way I imagined them when I wrote them. They're a little different now on the record, but uh, I'm going to play them a little more organically than I have in a while. And so I'm excited about that. I'm excited for people to hear them. I'm excited for the people that are here, you know, my... My kids are here. My wife is here. Rossi's here. And so Rossi's been around watching me um, put this together over the last few years. And so I'm very grateful that she's, uh, she's here today uh, videotaping it, as it were. But, uh, you know, that, that being said, I, uh, I'm just, I'm really grateful for the opportunity. I'm grateful for the day. I'm grateful to be here. And I'm grateful that I can make a lot of noise in the library where they're telling me to be quiet. And so... As we're going through the songs, bear with me because I'll just tell you a little bit about them and um, kind of the the thought process in uh, without boring you with all the hyper technical or hyper art artisty explanations. But I'll just tell you that I wrote the record. It's nine songs on the album, and I wrote about thirteen, and nine made it onto this record, and then I've got another fourteen now that I'm. I'm already making another record, so, and not because I'm bored with this one, it's just, that's kind of the way it goes. You, you finish one and you start working on another one, that's what I'm doing, but the, the period that this covers was about the last three years of my life, and they were somewhat uh, 
tumultuous, you know, for lack of a better word. And so a lot of the songs on the record reflect a lot of honesty about what I was going through and what, uh, and it's, it's, some of it's direct and some of it's abstract, but it's there. And I think that it's, uh, it's important in any kind of art, whatever the medium is, is mm -hmm. to be honest to the art. And mm -hmm. I think I, I think I did that. I think I was doing that. And so this first song is a song called uh, Sleep Alone. And it's not a single, and I don't know if it ever will be, but it's a song that uh, it was probably one of the fourth or fifth songs that I wrote, and I, I wrote it uh, at my house. And, you know, I, I think that for me anyway, I've learned to kind of sit down and start working on things, and it helps me do it. And this is a song that I kind of sat down, and I told myself I'm going to write a song. I just didn't know what it was, and it's, I just started messing around, and, and and it kind of started coming to me, and I, I was reacting to some things that I was watching on the news and uh, that were happening. And I didn't. The song's not so much political; it's more uh, an observation of what was going on and how, you know, those things don't seem to matter in the grand scheme of things. And at the time, I, I was, um, I'd been spending a lot of time in Austin, and I felt, uh, you know, I was with a lot of people because you are in Austin, but uh, I felt really lonely. I was alone. And the, the song reflects that. And so this song called I Sleep Alone. Tuck myself in almost every night. Turn the fire down, I hug my pillow tight. And I can watch my shows there ain't nobody home. Just like that, and I sleep alone. Sunday morning paper reads, We are at war. The five star general on TV says it's so. The five out president says they can't take a knee. It doesn't make a difference between you. I sleep alone, there ain't no long ride. I leave a crease in the sheets beside me each and every night. Better man would have done you like that, this I can't deny. And just like that, and I sleep alone. Spend some time away now playing, writing songs. Contrary to belief, they're not about you at all. I change the words around like some old denying fool. I'm in my bed, look, there's me, there's no you. I sleep alone, there ain't no wrong or right. I leave a crease in the sheets beside me each and every night. Better man wouldn't have done you like that But I can't deny And just like that And I sleep alone I sleep alone Yeah, Light is fading, I know what comes next I ask myself the question, the answer's always yes and For a moment footsteps echo and there's light Ain't nobody home, it's just a coming of the night but I sleep alone, there ain't no rock right I make each and every night. Better man when it done you like this, I can't deny. And just like that, my sleep. Thank you. So, 
I, uh, I think that was one of, I want to say I, I wrote that song at, it was in September, and the reason I remember September is I was going through, um, I have a good habit, I think, of recording stuff when I think I like it, and I have to play it a few times, and I said, you know what, that's a keeper. And I was telling Chris before uh, everybody got here that I wrote a song, uh, it's called Brand New Tattoo, and I'm not going to play it tonight, um, but I was grateful that Rossi was <laughs> videotaping when I was playing it because I couldn't remember the rhythm, and then uh, there's a certain uh, feel to it that I couldn't duplicate when I was playing it again. I'm like, damn it, I just don't remember. And then she sent me the video, so I was very grateful for that. But I remember writing the song in September because I was looking through some uh, recordings. And, uh, you know, once we, once we got into the studio and we did it, uh, there's a lot of repetition in terms of doing things over and over again and doing them right. You know, the producer uh, that I worked with, um, Ricky Sanchez, he would really put me through the paces in doing it. And so... It, you, you don't want to lose a lot of the organic nature of the song and whatnot. And so when I listened to the recording, like the way I just played it was kind of the way that I wrote it. And so um, it's not much different on the record today, but what's different is just kind of the pacing. And, and maybe it's a little slower right now. But um, anyway, that being said, this next song is a song called Philistines and Muddy Waters. It was the single that we released the first one. And it's a song I wrote. Uh, I was in Austin. I was in the legislative session and you know, there's, when you're in the legislature, you have, within good days, you have bad days, and, um, you know, you can have good moments to bad moments like that from zero to 60, and we just had, like, a really rough week, uh, at least I did, and I, I just, um, I was responding to a lot of the hypocrisy that I could feel around me, not just from my colleagues, but from myself, too, and, and the song is about that, it's about, uh, the hypocritical nature of ourselves. And, and you know, I, I um, it was real easy for me to point fingers or about hypocrisy and say, well, this song is about hypocrites, but not me. But the truth is, if you can't look at yourself, uh, then you're really not being honest about, about that. And as the song evolved, I realized I was really talking about myself. And so that's what the song's about. It's Philistines and Muddy Waters. Philistines and muddy waters, Bible beads, trusty tongues, bad verse from a book that they really don't need. And cupboards bare, cry in your pasture. Mama said they're coming at you. I never really worry, cause I ain't got much to give. I speak in tongues to further some old place that left behind. I can't accept this courtesy, soaks my feeble mind. From Death Valley to your mountain. Casting pennies in your fountain Just a foot below the water Where we drown in all our dreams And cold black soul rolling your thunder Looking for a heart to plunder And I can't bear to smile There ain't nothing here that's real and I speak in tongues the summer place I left behind I can't accept this courtesy soaks my feeble
I speak in tongues to further some old place I left behind. And I can't accept this courtesy, soaks my feeble mind. Steams and muddy water. Thank you, everybody. So I, I told uh, I told Chris that I can't play unless somebody gets me a Diet Dr Pepper, and she had one for her. <laughs> Little sweet. <laughs> so actually, I, I told her I needed 15 red M and M's, 11 green ones, five blue. Uh, so. I'm just kidding. The Dr. Pepper's fine. The Dr. Pepper's fine. The, um, so um, this, uh, this next song is, um, is a song that, you know, the, the, the album is, it's autobiographical, but it's also in some form or fashion uh, a love letter to myself and to the place that I'm from. And so I wrote this other song, 57. It's kind of funny is I was, um, I was listening to the radio and I heard a song that I really, really like. And it's very, um, it had these an anthem-like qualities, right? And I'm a big fan of songs like that, like Bruce Springsteen's um, Born to Run. And I mean, you know, that's one of the greatest rock and roll anthems that's ever written, right? And so I, I, uh, I can't remember who, but they said, well, why don't you write a song like that? And I'm like, well, all right, I'm going to write a song like that. And so I, I didn't, I don't know if I, you can't sit down and say, I'm going to write a song like that, and then you're going to write a song like that. It just kind of came. But the, the song really is a love letter to, uh, to hear, in a way. And it, it kind of wrapped up the, how I was feeling over the last two years and, and, how I've been feeling over the last, you know, 18 months of my life and, and where I'm at today. And so it was without realizing I was putting a punctuation on that period of my life and putting a punctuation on what I've done up to this point. And it was uh, cathartic. You know, all of this is cathartic, playing it, writing it, and recording it, and then playing it for you all. And, then, and even more so being able to tell you the stories about how it gets done. But um, this is uh, this is uh, fifty seven.
preaching song It'll blow your candles out And the lines on my face Tell me how The life that I've been leading The years they got me reeling They reveal me And take me home Liquor in my flask burns my throat and it knocks me off my feet And the bus lets you blow it on the white line the road starts where you begin Straight down the line leading me to the end Stretching like a ribbon going on and on And roaring from a river Calling me It's on 57, take me home. 57, take me home. I try to tame the wildness that I know. It's grafted to my soul. From the bottom of a river it flows It flows The road starts where you begin Straight down the line leading me to the end Stretching like a ribbon going on and on And roaring from a river Calling me its own if you say I won't take me home If you say I won't take me home If you say I won't Thank you. Um, so obviously that's not a Bruce Springsteen song. <laughs> the uh, I think the 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 song itself, you know, obviously 57. I'm talking about Highway 57, and so a lot of people don't know this, but Highway 57 runs from Canada all the way to Panama. So the road here basically cuts the continent in half and so it'll take you just as far as it as you want but can also bring you back and so the the song if you will was the idea being that that doesn't matter how far out you get you can always come back and that's what it's about so um this next song and again they're all somewhat personal autobiographical and a lot of songs that they come from obviously my own experiences, but they also come from observations. You know, you, you observe things around you, the people around you, and you absorb that, and from there comes the music and or the lyrics, and so, or a combination. And this song is not one of those songs. It's, it's personal. And I think when you hear it, you'll understand why. It's uh, Whiskey Ain't Free. The song is uh, called Whiskey Ain't Free. This is the second single off the record, by the way. Mama told me it's 
interesting thing about writing music and or uh, I, I found out a couple things one is I'm not a very good musician <laughs> so and what I mean by that is I've been fortunate that I get to play with like really really good musicians and so they teach me a lot about because uh, I've only had one piano lesson in my life and I think I had a couple guitar lessons and everything everything else I, I learned from watching people but uh, or they were good enough to teach me and so I think that the it's interesting how melodies come to me and then progressions and these different ideas, but a lot of that has to do with playing with people that are, that are a lot more talented than I am at, at creating and playing music, and I'm grateful for that because without that, um, I'd have a hard time, I think, realizing what, you know, the sounds that I have in my head and, and what I want to do. And I remember when, when we started the band back in 20... 16, uh, you know, Jorge's here, and Jorge's in the band, but he didn't want to play tonight because 
He said it was enough just to have two people making noise, but that's fine. But I remember, you know, we'd have these, these discussions about uh, some of the songs that we would play. And the reason we would play them, like we would cover these songs that probably weren't very popular, but we were doing it because I had a sound in my head with the music that I was making, and I wanted to approximate that. And so rather than playing things that I think, not that they were unpopular songs, they just weren't songs that you would expect to hear in a bar, right? And um, I think that, that that catapulted me or helped me uh, get further along faster than uh, than I would have. You know, and I, I'm grateful, too, because they let me play in the band. The the legislature, the House, has a band, right? And they let me in the band. And uh, it was a big mistake that they let me in the band because the minute I got in the band, I wanted to change everything that they were doing, right? Which, because that's kind of how I do it, right? That's how I roll. But uh, I I was, you know, that was a good lesson in humility, and it was a good lesson in also telling me that I wanted to keep playing music and making it. I just needed to do it in a different way. Um, why don't we do 40 Dogs? That's a good song that we... So we're going to do a cover. Uh, uh, this is an artist called Bob Schneider, and uh, I really like this song, so we, we, uh, we play it a lot. Well, if I spell it out, if I get it out, will you hear me when I tell you about it? Before it gets too late It's not easy what to say to me But there's something right about you and me Something right about you and me You're the color of a burning book You're the color of a sideways look From an undercover cop in a comic book You're the color of a storm in June You're the color of the moon You're the color of the night, that's right You're the color of the fight you move me You're the color of the colored father Who makes the vows move it Well, I Romeo, June we're like 40 dogs in there Cigarettes were like good times It haven't happened yet well. And I can tell you where Gonna be where the whole world falls To the sea where we live in Ever after happily All the boys taking you for granted Tell you what they want with eyes all slanted I don't like the way they look at you I don't like the way they talk to you Wouldn't let them talk to you Don't let them talk to you like that and Put them up high to reach for the ceiling Tell them I'm wrong, damn it, I'm real Ain't no crime, it's just dreams of stealing And the thing to get more than stealing You take the high and I'll take the low Get there before you know Ain't got no time to waste We got too much life to taste we're like Romeo, Juliet, like all the dogs in there. Cigarettes were like good times in heaven. Happy and well. I can tell you where we're gonna be. Oh, well, falls in to the sea. We'll be living ever after. Happily. Sometimes you remind me of a moonbeam With a ghost of a moonbeam Down by the beach, down by the coast Slipping to the middle like the most Beautiful thing I've ever seen Come out tonight, come out with me, baby To the careful, into the crazy Turn the sky black into a sky blue Turn a close shave into a woo-hoo What they say is true A lot of fire got to burn a a lot of fire got a bunch of view. We're gonna do what we wanna do, and we're like Romeo, Juliet. We're like Florida dogs. Cigarettes were like good times in heaven. Happened yeah, well. I can tell you where you're gonna be, where the whole world falls in to the sea. We'll be living ever after. Happily That was 40 Dogs and Cigarettes. That's a fun song to play. 
Because I feel like I'm rapping. <laughs> I know, right? But I, 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 I have so much fun playing that song. I don't know why I just do. Uh, I, he lives in Austin now, Bosch. I think he's originally from El Paso. And uh, I know he used to date Sandra Bullock. He does not anymore. But I know he did. And I don't know if that's relevant to his musical career, but that's just a fact. And so I... Um, so... We, we've got two songs out on, like, uh, and Chris was good enough to uh, promote them right now, and I appreciate that, Chris. But it's Philistines and Muddy Waters and Whiskey and Free, which you've already heard both of them. And they're out on every streaming platform, so stream them because I have kids that are going to college, and I would like to. Although, all I have to say, if, if I had to um, uh, completely earn my living making music, it'd be difficult. But you know what? That's all right. Difficult is good sometimes, right? But uh, the, uh, we're very uh, blessed and fortunate that we're going to be able to put this thing out on vinyl. It's getting pressed right now. And, uh, in fact, I got um, an email yesterday from the, the pressing company, the record company, that they're going to have the test so that we can hear it and, and, um, and go from there. But we're excited about that. And, you know, one of the things is I, I've got a pretty good record collection, and so... I couldn't see um, making a record and not putting it on vinyl and because that's the way I listen to music at home. And I also believe that people want, you know, we, we um, having a record really involves you in listening to the music because you have to sit there while the music or the record spins, and then you have to get up and flip the record over. And so it engages you in the music in a way that, you know, your phone... You know, I, I, I laugh at the way some people listen to music now. They're just forwarding, like, they'll listen to half the song, and then they'll forward it. Like, <laughs> and, and we have, you know, one of the things that, and I mean, I don't, you know, I don't know if it's a good thing or bad thing, but we just seem to be more manic about everything that we do these days because everything's at our fingertips, and we want, I say we, I want. You know, I want everything because I want it, and I want it right now, right? And I think music's no different, and, uh, but I think I, I've, I've always been able to uh, to digest music because I have records, and I'm I'm uh, and I don't think that makes me a better listener of music than somebody who's fast forwarding the songs. It's just the way I do it. But I I think that in making the record and making the vinyl, it's a, for me it was a labor of love because it's something that I can share. I feel like it's actually I'm I'm something that that I can share, and I hope to be able to sell a lot of copies too, so I can pay for it. <laughs> but uh, uh, but you'll be able to buy that at 7172 Records. You can already buy uh, an order, and as soon as we have it, we'll uh, we'll put it in your hot little hands so that you can spin it on your turntable. And um, you know, one of the things that I enjoy about listening to records is I, I take the sleeve, and I like reading. You know, who produced it, what instruments they played on it, uh, who are the musicians on the record, where it was made. Um, you know, whatever thoughts the artist had or if he was grateful or if he's upset. Like, the record sleeve tells you a lot about that. And we don't get that, you know, from a digital copy. And so the record sleeve in, in our album is going to have all the lyrics and, uh, and it has, um, has some very cool pictures of the band. Uh, and I don't really care how they came out. I just care how I look. On the, uh, I'm just kidding. Uh, they, they're, they're, they look all right, too. But... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, you, you're great, Joe. You're great. The uh, but I I wanted to be able to share that experience of you know the the instruments that we played on it, where we made it, and I was grateful that you know one of the partners that we had in making the record, Regi Sanchez, you know, used to be in a pretty big band uh, in Latin America, Caos, and then now he's got another band called Ox Oxido, and he um, he was integral to how the sound came together, and I think um, I wouldn't have been able to do it without him. And, you know, the pandemic kind of made things difficult because we couldn't be in the same place at the same time. Uh, but, uh, you know, it worked, uh, I think, and I think the results are on, on uh, the songs that came out. And I'm really excited about the new stuff that, that I, we're doing and that I'm working on because I feel like... Um, like I crossed a boundary that I didn't know I could cross. And, and I can tell you that I, I probably wouldn't have been able to finish it if I hadn't gotten clean and sober, and I'm really grateful for that today because, you know, like it or not, that's a part of my life, you know, the before and the after. And so 
it's uh, it's in no small part to that, and uh, I'm really grateful for the people around me that allow me to to share the music. And thank you again, Chris. And you know, I think uh, my friends and everybody's here. My sister's here, who was in the band. In fact, Chris and I were talking about that right now. <laughs> she she asked me why you weren't in the band. I was like, she quit. <laughs> We got into a fight. But you know what? It worked out because we get along a lot better now. <laughs> I, well, I told her she needs to start her own band. Maybe she will. So uh, she's not in the band anymore, Joe. You don't have to do that. <laughs> so, so and, you know, we were, we were laughing because when we started the band, it was me and I, I forced Tony this class has to play bass because we have a bass player. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and so, well, and then we, I, I don't know where I had this little drum kit. And it's, it's almost like a drum kit that a monkey would play. It's really small. So <laughs> Willie came over. And uh, I, uh, just watching Willie sit behind the, the drum kit, I was like, we need to get a bigger drum kit. <laughs> yeah, and so it was, um, it was, and you know what? I didn't, I didn't really have any... Um, expectation of how things would go. I just know that I wanted to do this and where it would go or where it would lead and who knows where. It, I, I just know like it's led me here to the Eagle Pass Public Library tonight so I could play these songs. And so, so I'm grateful for that. Do you have a question, young man? What is it? Uh, ask your mother about that. <laughs> uh, although I get, I, get, I get suggestions not, you know, I take I take uh, criticism. I don't take uh, I don't take requests. Not because I don't want to fulfill your every fantasy or need. It's just I probably can't play whatever it is you want me to play. <laughs> but uh, no, I I uh, we'll talk about that later. How's that? But I, I'm grateful. Thank you, Mayor, for for opening the library to us tonight. Um, for those of you who don't know, there's an election going on, so go vote if you have not. Um, but I will. Uh, I will tell you that uh, we're really grateful for the, and I call it a, a, a partnership because for any artist here in town, and I've gotten to meet a few, not just uh, musicians, but there's actually some good local musicians that play music and make music, and so I've been fortunate to run across them, and, and I'm, 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 I'm impressed with some of the stuff that they're doing, and, and I hope they like some of the stuff I'm doing, but I think uh, we have a great partner in the city that promotes these things, so thank you, Mayor. Um, it's important, you know, art, music, uh, you know, Rossi's an awesome painter. If you haven't seen her paintings, they're hanging in the office. Uh, and then there's a couple at the house that are awesome too. And so we, uh, we're very fortunate that as artists, we can kind of feed each other, feed off each other, feed each other. <laughs> that was a Freudian slip. <laughs> and so, but it's, it's, uh, it's a really good, um, and I've been, I've been fortunate, I've been able to travel a lot because of my work in the legislature and, and uh, the district that I represented was very big. And there's a lot going on in it and I was able to meet a lot of artists and I can tell you that uh, it didn't matter how far I went, I knew that there were comparable or better artists here, you know, not very far from, from, from home. So I, I encourage you to keep um, promoting it as you are. Uh, Mayor and Chris, thank you again for promoting it and um, I will, uh, I'll leave you with this last song. This, is, uh, this one, I don't think you know, Joe, but it's called The Night. That it's at the liquor store. Lining up outside and some begin to sweat Hollow moon, it echoes full yet robbing us of light Darkness settles on the town, yeah, mindless of the town And the night, the night Rush out through the days and burning up Burn in a blue sky
Tattered jeans are holding my soul Offer no protection There's a road I know it well And it runs in one direction There's an edge of the air outside And I can hardly breathe Blind man raising hell That only he can see The night The night Shot through the days and burning a blue sky tonight. Tonight, take everything I love and leave in me. Blind man told me something, something I forget. It doesn't matter now, and I shrug with some regrets. Will salvation come now with the morning light? On my knees Won't the daylight come and rescue me From the night? There's a voice from up above echoing my choice Tells me the night, the night Take everything I loved and leaving me, leaving me behind Thank you very much everybody I hope you enjoyed it Out in Facebook Landia Thank you, all of you, for joining us and for uh, sharing this very special moment uh, with us here at the Eagle Pass Public Library. Uh, I've known Poncho for many years, as he said, and he used to sing at the Rexall and the talent shows, and wow, like this is very special to me, and I'm glad I got the privilege of being able to share this with the community. This is, to me, this means a lot, and I know that it inspires people at home, our youth at home, too. If you want to, you have a passion for something, pick up your guitar, pick up your paintbrush, pick up whatever it is that you want, Go for it. You could do it. And uh, Poncho, thank you so much for doing this for me. It really means a lot. And thank you for everybody watching. Thank you for making and helping this happen and me making it possible. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, for making time to share with us tonight. And it means a lot to me. And a couple of words before we close from the mayor. Again, thank you, Chris. I mean, we got an amazing team at the City of Eagle Pass, City of Eagle Pass. And Chris is a big part of it as the director of the Eagle Pass Public Library, uh, bringing new ideas, like I mentioned earlier. And you got Joe Cruz also here, director, the manager of the Main Street program, always putting on events at the new Eagle Pass Art and Culture Center. And, you know, I was looking forward to hearing a song that I knew the words to. He always. I jump in when I. Song, okay? <laughs> at least for that one line. <laughs> motivated to buy the record. There you go. I'm going to have to buy the record. Oh, the mayor doesn't get a free autographed one. <laughs> as, long no. as, a, as long as it's under $25, you there, can there, there you go. There you go. No, great music, Boncho. I'm impressed. You know, I heard you at the Victorian Ice House a while back ago, and I was really impressed with your style of music. It's soothing. It's comforting. There's only one thing missing, but we're not going to mention that right now. <laughs> And, and, you know, it just goes to show, and, and ever since Joe got here with the Main Street program, he's brought activities to Main Street. And, and with COVID, stopped everything. We're getting back up there. And you see the mobility. You see the, the great things that are happening in our community. The vaccine has really played a key part. And, and now our infection rates are way low. You see people comfortable out and about. And, you know, I'm very proud that our community continues to wear the face mask while they're out and about. So... Uh, we've got so much more plans. I know Joe and I talk a lot, and, you know, th there's a big vision for downtown and making big improvements. And the public library here and the direction of Chris Olivas is a big part of it. And, and, again, it's because of the amazing team we have and the talent. You know, 
there's so much talent here, and I think there's going to be another talented group playing tomorrow at the Victoria Nice House. Uh, that should be a great event. And, and, you know, for those of you that can go out there and support these events, because if they're supported, they'll continue to happen. And I know Joe works hard. Poncho, thank you for being here, sharing your talent, giving a little bit of your story and everything that you represent. I'm really proud of you. And, oh! <laughs> He's got the chocolates. So again, Eagle Pass, I hope you enjoyed it. And thank you for joining us this evening for a little music with Poncho Nevarez. And for, for sidekick services, you can call 1 800. No. 555 There you go. God bless everybody. Thank you, everybody. And again, thank you, Joe. Thank you.